I've got this nice problem today, which comes from the Estonian National Math Olympiad from the year 1997. So I think it's this pretty cool geometry problem that maybe the coolest thing about it is that it has such a nice picture that goes along with it. So let's look at that picture. We've got a circle, a large circle, which is in white. Then we have this yellow equilateral triangle, which is sized so that we get these five sub-circles, which I have in orange at each of these five spots. And we wanna assume that the radius of all of these sub-circles is one. So the radius of this is one, the radius of this is one, the radius of that is one, and so on and so forth. And maybe dispel your disbelief by my poor drawing, but suffice it to say, those are all one. Then given that information, we want to find the radius of the large circle and the side length of the large triangle. So there'll be a couple of things that I start with here. First, I'll go ahead and set r equal to the radius of the large circle so that we've got something to work with here. And I'll set capital S equal to the side length of the large triangle. Again, so we've got something to work with here. Next up, I'll notice that this small circle and the large circle are tangent. So that means if I draw the tangent line that they share, I create a sub-equilateral triangle in here. Maybe I'll make this purple so that it looks a little bit different. So that's actually gonna be pretty helpful. So now we'll look at the general idea of our solution. I'm gonna add some named points in here. So I'll call this point right here, which is the intersection of the large triangle and this orange circle, I'll call that B. And then I'll call this point over here A. And then furthermore, for good measure, I'll call this point right here C, and then the center of the circle, I'll call O, like for the origin. And essentially what we wanna do is measure the line segment length from A to B two different ways. And those two different ways will give us a nice system of equations that involves R and S. So the first way I wanna do that is notice that AB is going to be exactly the height of the large triangle. So we can make a pretty simple calculation in order to determine that. So let's say this is our lar large triangle with side length S. So this guy right here is distance AB, just by our picture here. That makes this right here S over two. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find AB. So notice that length AB squared plus s squared over four equals s squared. Okay, but that tells us that the length of a b squared is equal to three s squared over four. That means this length a b is equal to the square root of three over two times s, where s again is the side length of the triangle. Okay, so let's maybe take that information up here and then we'll measure A, B a different way. Okay, so we just got done with our first calculation of length A, B. We found that it was root three over two S where that was the side length of the large triangle. Now I wanna calculate length A, B one more way. That'll be like this. So notice A, B is also going to be equal to the length A, C and then the length BC. So I'll just put plus BC here. But notice that's equal to length AC. And then BC can be easily calculated because BC is the diameter of the large circle minus the diameter of one of these small circles. But we know the diameter of this small circle is one. So let's see. Like I said, it's going to be the diameter of the large circle, which is 2r, minus the diameter of the small circle, but the diameter of the small circle is 2. So now we just have to calculate AC. 
So let's maybe expand this picture of this small triangle out here so that we can calculate AC nicely. Okay, so I've expanded out this picture so that we can easily calculate AC. So notice we don't know the measurement of this triangle, but we do know the measurement of the circle on the inside. In other words, the radius of the circle on the inside. So we can use that to help us out. So I'm going to break this AC down into parts. I'll put the center of the circle right here, like that, and then I'll call this rest of this length X. But now here's some other facts we know. If we drop a line segment from this center down here, we know that side length is 1. We know that because that's a radius of the circle. Next, this is an angle bisector of an angle of an equilateral triangle. So we know the measurement of this angle. That's going to be pi over 6. Finally, we know sine pi over 6 is going to be equal to 1 over x because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. But sine pi over 6 is equal to a half, which means x is equal to 2. Okay, but again, we know that this is another radius of the circle, meaning that AC has length 3, because we've got 2 from this value of x plus 1 from this extra radius of the circle. So putting this all together, we see that AB is also equal to 2R plus 1. One. So that gives us another expression of AB in terms of the radius of the circle. And in turn, that gives us a linear relationship between S and R. So let's keep that linear relationship and then we'll find another linear relationship between S and R. So by measuring AB, the distance from this point to this point two ways, we determined a linear relationship between R and S. So I've recombined it a little bit and we found that r is equal to root 3 over 4s minus half. Now we're ready about to finish this off. So I'll do that by introducing another right triangle into this situation. So it'll go from here to here. Maybe I'll call this point P and then down through C to A. Great. Now I want to notice that this length right here is exactly equal to s over 2, given the fact that p is pretty clearly the midpoint of this bottom side of the triangle. Next, we can measure this distance from o to p pretty easily as well. So notice that is going to be equal to the radius of the circle minus two units because we've got this small circle here. So I can put this as equal to r minus two. Then we can also easily calculate this length. Well, what's that going to be? We get the radius of the circle plus ac, but on the last board we determined that ac was three. So here we get r plus three. But now there are a couple of paths that we can take. We could apply the Pythagorean theorem, but I think it's easier to use trigonometry again. Here we'll use the tangent of this angle. This angle is again pi over six. So we get tangent of pi over six is equal to r minus 2 over s over 2, like that. But that tells us that r minus 2 equals s over 2 times tan pi over 6. But tangent pi over 6 is a fairly standard angle. And here we'll get that this is equal to s over 2 root 3. So that means we've got another linear relationship for r in terms of s. We've got r is 1 over 2 root 3 times s plus 2, like that. Okay, so now we're ready to start putting those together. But now we can subtract these two equations to get rid of the r. That's going to leave us with root 3 over 4 minus 1 over 2 root 3 times s. So I've just combined the s terms. And then I'll have minus half minus 2. That's going to be minus 5 halves equals 0, like that. 
Now it's not too hard to go from here to the answer and you'll see that s is equal to 10 times the square root of 3. So that's the side length of our large triangle in this case. Now we take that value of s and plug it up here and what you'll see is that r is equal to 7. And that's a good place to stop.